This conference will now be recorded. Hello everyone and welcome to the Mid-Hudson Library System's Engage webinar series. This series is devoted to highlighting libraries that are having a positive impact on their communities. My name is Courtney Wimmers and I'm the Mid-Hudson Library System's Outreach and Engagement Specialist. Today we'll be learning about Battle of the Books. We are joined by Kristen, who is an adult and teen services librarian at the Kingston Library in the Mid-Hudson Library System. Thank you, Kristen, for agreeing to welcome us into the wonderful world of Battle of the Books. Oh, absolutely. Get ready. <laughs> <laughs> I'm super excited about this. and I feel like this is going to be helpful for a lot of our member libraries and maybe even libraries outside of our system who'd like to try something like this of their own. Great. So I guess I'll get started. Um, um, like Courtney said, I'm Kristen Charles Scaringi at the Kingston Library, and I'm here to talk to you about the Mid-Hudson Battle of the Books program, which many of you may or may not know, we've been participating in for 15 years. And by we, I mean member libraries in the system. So um, let's see. There's me. Um, I'm over on the right with the glasses holding on to a banner in 2016. Like Courtney said, I'm the adult and teen services librarian at the Kingston Library. I'm the hardcore Kingston hardcovers coach and a member of the Mid-Hudson Battle of the Books Committee at large, both since 2012. I am also the Battle of the Books board president which I've been doing for two years, so since 2017, and I've been a member of the executive board since 2016. Um, the hardcore Kingston hardcovers, shout out to my team. And there they are. <laughs> so you're probably wondering, if you don't already know, what is Battle of the Books? It's a system-wide book trivia competition for middle and high school students. It's open to all Mid-Hudson Library System member libraries. Um, in 2018, we had 24 middle school teams. I hope I'm right on that number. There's a lot of us and uh, 13 high school teams. It's primarily a summer program that culminates in, actually, it's a two-day trivia competition for both middle school and high school. Um, high school is one day, middle school is the other day. Um, I'll give you a little history. Like I said, this program has been around for over 15 years. It started in 2005, way before I came on the scene. Um, it was created by the Mid-Hudson Library System with five libraries participating and 50 students competing. Um, in 2018, there were more than 25 teams, two regional battles, and more than 300 students competing. So we've come a long way. That's a the, very impressive growth. <laughs> it is, and we want to grow even more. So, um, The original battle was held in the Mid-Hudson Auditorium, and today the regional battles rotate throughout um, the counties in our system. Right now we're working toward um, holding them at the community colleges in our system. So that's um, Columbia Green Community College in Hudson. Duchess in Poughkeepsie and SUNY Ulster in Stone Ridge. And so far we're doing pretty good with that. They're great venues, so shout out to them as well. Um, in 2016, uh, Mid-Hudson Battle of the Books became a fully library-led program. That year we also decided to hold our first ever teen competition. This used to be a program mainly just for tweens, so um, your middle school kids. The first teen battle was held at Mizzentop Day School in Pauling, and we had nine teams competing. And my team won first place. Yay! <laughs> um, the high school program is now going into its fourth year, and it's continuing to grow. The last time I looked, I think we may have 16 teams participating in the teen battle. So that's great. Um, I'm going to give you a little glance at our programs. The middle school program, which is what originally started, which it started in 2005. That's for students entering sixth through ninth grade in the fall of our competition year. So, for example, this year, any student that is going into sixth or ninth grade in September of this year can play in the 2019 competition. There are six books that we select for them that they have to read. 
and there are questions at the regional battle with the answers that are based on title and author of each book. So it's important to pay attention to that and drill those into your teams. The competition for that is going to be on Saturday, August 17th, 2019. This is a change. It used to be um, after Labor Day, um, but we're trying to consolidate our two teams to make it easier on our coaches. So we're trying it this year in the middle of August, and that's going to be at Columbia Green Community College, which is a fantastic venue. We've already been there twice. Then we have the high school program, which is for ninth through 12th grade students in the fall of the competition year. So again, that's September 2019. If they're heading into that those grades, um, they can participate in, in this year's competition. And that is five books that we've selected. And the questions are a little different here. It's um, title and author answers as well as trivia. So not only do they have to know the names and authors of the books, they have to really pay attention to the details, which is I applaud them for this because I would not be able to do this part. <laughs> Um, and that competition is going to be Friday, August 16th, 2019, also at Columbia Green Community College. So Kristen, is this something yes. that a, library could, a librarian could come to if they were curious about how the program worked in preparation for next year? Absolutely. We had a couple of people do that, not this past year, but the year before. And I have to say, it's Town of Asopus Library. I, I will always shout out to my fellow Battle of the Books libraries. Um, their librarian volunteered and helped us out and, you know, stuck around the year before and then the next year competed and did really, really well. So I think him having that inside look at it really helped his team. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So um, again, looking at the programs, you know, what's the benefit of all this? Um, well, you get bragging rights for one if you're a first, second, or third place winner in both the competitions. And you also get a banner that you get to hang up in in your library, which I can say is a good PR tool. Um, gets people asking lots of questions. So here you'll see last year's winners from the high school competition. Um, there was Beacon, Cold Spring, and Grinnell. And then the middle school winners were Beacon again, first place, go Beacon, um, Clinton and Brewster. And so if you visit these libraries, you're probably gonna see those, those lovely little banners. Although on the right, we have a new logo for Battle of the Books, so you're gonna see a new logo. <laughs> Sounds like Beacon's the team to beat this year. <laughs> they are. <laughs> They did really well. Um, so I had mentioned before we you, we select books, and by we I mean the librarians. So we do one of the things we do best and do readers advisory, I guess. <laughs> um, so here you'll see our middle school books. In the past, it's been wow. I think in the beginning it was ten books. For most of the time I've been in the program, it's been eight books. This year we're going to try six. Um, the thought there was getting more kids to read all the books and also so we can get some really good questions because not only do we have to read the books, we write the questions as the librarians. That's one of your jobs. Um, so here you'll see see all the books we're doing this year. There's some really, really great titles. Well, Pat, go on to what's involved. So I'm not going to lie, it's a lot of work. <laughs> Um, but it is so worth it. Um, each library basically puts together a team to compete in the regional battles. So you have the option of participating in one or both. Um, I'm one of the teams that does both. It's even more work. Um, it's library staff members, sometimes trustees, sometimes former team members, sometimes directors that serve as the coaches. And I'll talk a little bit about what, what it's, what it means to be a coach. For most of us, we consider it another program we do at our libraries and the format is totally, of how it's run is totally up to the libraries themselves. I know some teams hold book discussion groups where they, they analyze and dissect each book. I've tried that a couple of times and it has never worked for my team. 
I'm not opposed to it, but it just it doesn't work for my team. Um, here are some of the responsibilities that if you decide to become a Battle of the Books library, we're going to be asking you to do, and that's one, forming a team, um, setting up meetings, finding kids to be on your team, all that great stuff. Um, purchase books. A lot of our library's friends groups do that for the kids. So um, we buy paperback copies of the books that they each each team member that completes the, the program gets to keep. So it's, it's a little uh, added bonus for them. Uh, you need to t attend Battle of the Book planning committee meetings, and we're on a good schedule right now where we're only holding about four a year. And that's where we all come together, usually at the Mid-Hudson Library System Auditorium. Uh, we ask that you join a subcommittee, and that usually has to do with question writing or facilities or volunteers. There's, there's a lot of different options, but we ask that you know you help out since we are all running this program together. You hold team meetings at your library, you write questions, and you purchase t-shirts. So it sounds like a lot, and it can be, but it, it's usually pretty well spread out through through the year. It gets a little heavy in the summer, but that's kind of the life of a librarian, isn't it? Yes. I've never been <laughs> a librarian who said their summers were not busy. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah, it's it just, it's not time for rest and relaxation. It's time for, like, getting in gear and getting things done. So um, no different with Battle of the Books. Benefits of participation. Um, for me, what I've noticed in, wow, I've been doing this for about seven years, is collaboration, community, competition, and creativity. Um, just give me a second here. So the collaboration, we all have to work together as libraries to bring this, well, two events together. So um, you really learn how to work with others. Community, it, this is one of the few programs I've seen that brings together so many different aspects of our system. I'm talking about library staff members, board members, college communities, um, parents, students. It's, it's a pretty amazing site if you haven't been there to go to a battle and see our system like in person. It's great. Um, competition. I know most of us kind of scare or shy away from that, that word, but um, we really, it's friendly competition and you can go back to your library and feel so pumped up about what you're doing at your program. So it's been really great for my library. We really kind of identified ourselves and then creativity. You design t-shirts. Um, my team happens to have a mascot, which you'll see in a couple of, in a couple of slides, um, that was created by my team, like my kids. Uh, team names. Uh, there are some really good names. There's some libraries that I don't know how they do it, but they change their names every year. <laughs> so um, lots of lots of areas for creativity and fun. These are just some images illustrating those four points I was talking about before. Um, up in the left, there's you can see the crowd at the, mid, the middle school regional battle last year. That's at SUNY Ulster. Then there's a practice battle with Beacon and Cold Spring. There might be another library there, um, but during the year, as we get ready for the regional battles, a lot of libraries collaborate and hold practice battles, like smaller sessions so you can really see what a battle's like. There's my team from many, many years ago um, playing with Tivoli, and Tivoli also had their own mascot. Um, then we've got, oh, former Mid-Hudson assistant director, Mary Beth, who for so many years has been our go-to volunteer. Um, I'm going to plug right here if anybody's interested in I mean, if you're not interested in participating this year, you could always help us out as a volunteer and get a good like view of what the competition is like. Um, we definitely are going to miss Mary Beth this year. <laughs> um, there's some of the friendly competition I was talking about. I love when the other teams go congratulate each other, especially, you know, if they weren't the winning team. 
it's it's just great to see those kids get together. And then I was talking about our mascot. So a few years ago, while we were waiting to participate in a battle, one of my teens started drawing and they were drawing what's an apple core there on the left. And nobody took credit for it, but one of the team members redrew it for us. And then I have a person on staff who's a comic book artist who made him all fancy and buff. And he became Bob the Apple because we're the hardcore Kingston hardcovers. So uh, he's a hardcore apple core. <laughs> and he, <laughs> go ahead. It's so creative. That is really cool. <laughs> right? And it's so funny because like, <laughs> you see the age difference when you when you work with the teens because they were like, yeah, we named him Bob for Battle of the Books. And I was like, oh, I thought you named him Bob because he's, you know, bobbing for apples <laughs> or Battle of the Books. And then um, you'll see on the far right is Caleb, who's one of our team members, um, holding Bob at Advocacy Day. Bob has gone to Library Advocacy Day for about three years, I think. Um, and he's a great talking point. But we it just occurred to us that uh, New York State, we're, we're known for apples, the big apple, Bob the apple. So there's so <laughs> many different layers to, to Bob. And he goes to like so many events. He's kind of become our mascot for the library too. But he's, Bob is great. I can't say enough about Bob. <laughs> So um, that was just a little overview. Um, this is the people you see here are my executive board who have been, I mean, they're the ones that make this happen. There's, I'm the president in charge of everything. We have Jen Gay at um, Patterson Library, who's the vice president and next year's president. We have Jolie at Poughkeepsie, who is our middle school program chair. So she's in charge of the middle school program. And Maureen McGrath, um, who's at our high school program, who's leading our high school program. So if you have any questions, feel free to contact any of us and we'll be happy to, to tell you a little bit more. Thank you, Kristen. This has been awesome so far. Um, so Great. I have a couple of questions for you. Sure. <laughs> That's cool. So um, why did your library decide to be part of the Battle of the Books program? Was this something that you started uh, to be interested in or was this in place before you started? This was in place way before I started. I had never, ever heard of it, but apparently my director had. So she one day suggested that I attend a meeting, a Battle of the Books committee meeting to see what it was like. And that was in 2012 and I'm still here. So, <laughs> um, my first team was very small and completely un unprepared. Like we did not know how intense this, this competition was. It's intense. I watched my kids go from being really excited to a little scared. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, it was hard to watch that year, but it definitely influenced what I did next year because I was very pleasantly surprised that I had kids that wanted to come back and try again. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we've just kept growing our, the school district, uh, the Kingston City School District does a Battle of the Books program. And a lot of them hear that we have one and want to keep doing it. So that's how we've gotten a lot of people. Um, I've gotten a lot of families. So I've seen like some people that I had in the beginning, their their younger siblings are now on my team. So it's that's one way I've recruited people. But um, yeah. yeah, it wasn't something I actively sought out, but um, it's something I just love being a part of. That's great. Yeah. Uh, so what kind of feedback do you get from your community about the Battle of the Books program? I get a lot of adults asking for a Battle of the Books team for them. <laughs> Which, which I would, I would love to do, <laughs> and I, I have grand thoughts about doing that. I also think it might make a good fundraiser at some point for Battle of the Books. Um, so that's something we've been thinking about. But I, the adults want to be a part of it. It's, it's a full-on competition. I mean, there's a buzzer system. <laughs> 
like a serious buzzer system. And um, it's just so much fun. And I mean, how many programs are there out there that you can read books, which is considered a solitary activity and then get together and like compete over them. So it's, it's this great pairing that I love. I love to see. I can only imagine how intense an adult battle of the books competition would get. Oh yeah, because the adults get very intense at the battle. The kids, the kids get intense too. And I apologize for calling them kids because they're teens and tweens, but um, it gets really intense. The parents are really invested in this. The, t the library staff are very invested in it too, so. So what would you say has been your biggest challenge in the course of running this program? Oh, are you talking at my library or the program in general? general? Um, either. Um, actually, the answer for both is recruitment, getting people to want to take this on. Because when you come to the first meeting, it, it sounds like you are going to be doing Battle of the Books most of the day at work. And that's not true. Um, the executive board has been very good about making sure we're spreading the responsibility. So it's not, it's something you can do at your job. I mean, all of us have a day job. So it's something you can do at your job a little bit. And uh, yeah, we just all work together. That's the most important part. So what would you say to a library staff member who's looking at this and think that it's really cool and wants to get involved, um, but they've never done Battle of the Books before, what would your top tip be for them? Come volunteer for us at this year's battle and really see what, what it's like. Um, I'm kind of joking about that, but not really. <laughs> um, I have to say, talk to us. Talk to somebody who has a team, who's had a team for a couple of years, reach out to the members of the executive executive board um, and just come see it maybe a practice battle it just seeing it in action you really understand what we're trying to do awesome and yeah. finally do you have any resources that you would recommend for librarians who are interested in learning more about the program so we have a website which is mhbattleofbooks.org um, I did get that right. Yay. <laughs> I would I would visit there. We have lots of pictures. We have rules for how it's set up. Um, we should, I, I might have to double check this, but we have a description of all the different roles you can take on. Um, I would definitely visit our website. Uh, we do send out a notice about our meetings usually like our quarterly meetings, I'd encourage people to attend those just to find out what it's all about. Um, but most importantly, I can't stress enough is like reaching out to people that are actively participating in it. That's always a good tip right there. <laughs> right, right. Um, I do have, you know, oh, go, go ahead. I was just gonna ask if you have anything that you wanted to add. <laughs> well, I, I, do, I do wanna, you know, talk about my executive board a little bit. Um, like I said, we became a library-led program in 2016. Um, the program used to be run through Mid-Hudson Library Systems. Um, Kirsten Kruger has been phenomenal. Um, she always, she was our fearless leader for so many years, um, but we took it over and, you know, took ownership of it in 2016. And our chair at that point was Maureen McGrath. She's at the Butterfield Library in Cold Spring. Her and I were instrumental in creating the executive board system we have now. And I, as president, continue to just build upon that structure that we, we developed many years ago. Um, so I just have to say thank you to Maureen. Jen is just phenomenal. She is so passionate about Battle of the Books. She she talks about it everywhere. She um, she gets people on board. She's just fantastic. So I just thank you to them. I, you know, I wouldn't be able to do this without, I wouldn't be able to be a coach and get this program like together without them. 
it sounds like you have a really awesome team running this. And, uh, oh, we have a fantastic team. It's we just we work well together. We're all passionate, um, and we're just we're looking to make sure this program sustains. You know that it just keeps going no matter like who's in charge of it. Um, yeah, and it, I have to say it's been a great professional development experience for me. Um, I graduated from the Leadership and Management Academy through NYLA a couple of years ago and have been able to take what I've learned there and apply it to, to running Battle of the Books. So that's, it's, if you're looking for professional development skills, um, definitely consider Battle of the Books. So it sounds like this is not only a good opportunity for like teens and tweens in the area, but mm -hmm. also for librarians to build their skills. Yes, exactly. Yep. So thank you so much, Kristen, for this oh, you're welcome. wonderful overview of what Battle of the Books is, and hopefully it will encourage some of our libraries who aren't currently part of the program to get involved. It seems like it's really great and builds like a friendly, competitive spirit between libraries, which is always fun. It does. I mean, it, and not only that, it builds community with the libraries. My, my team members are always there to support other teams. And just watching that support is fantastic. It's just so good to watch people helping other people. That's always a good thing to watch. <laughs> right, right. And yeah, absolutely. All right. So with that, I think we're going to wrap it up. And thank you. Sounds good. Anybody who's watching this in the future for, for uh, being interested and wanting more information. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, visit our website or contact me and we will we will welcome you into the fold that is Battle of the Books. All right. Bye for now. <laughs> Bye.